Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. And if this is coming to you in real time, you are probably pretty taken up right now with holidays and festive whatnot. If you are, I have some advice for you. And that is, get your memories down. Get these days down in your illustrated journal now. If you are taken up with uh, the holidays, then I can hear you thinking all the way from where you are there. And you're thinking, is she nuts? I don't have time to make a cup of tea, let alone work in my visual diary. Well, yes, yes you do. You just don't know it yet. And in today's short video, I have ideas, tips, hacks, and strategies for getting those pages made during this time. Whether you are decking the halls or lighting a menorah, whether you are volunteering or going to services, or if you're like me and you're sitting the whole thing out, I don't like Christmas, you will never be sorry that you got your memories down right now. I've said this before. Imagine that you had some pages, even two, three, or four, from your grandmother or a great-great-uncle or maybe from someone in your family that you never got to meet. What they were eating, what they were wearing, uh, what they were doing, and who they were doing it with. Wouldn't those pages be precious? So let's do the same now. Today I'm going to show you how you can get that done. If you like journal arts, altered books, vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications. And you will have more of them in your life. Now, let's go see how we can make pages. This video has two parts. The first is going to be, uh, I'm going to give you some prompts that is some ideas of what to put in your pages. The second part is going to have those strategies and techniques for getting your pages made during this busy time. Do not feel like you need to take notes about the prompts because I have made a list of them and put them in the text below this video. So you can go check that out and find those ideas. The first one of which is Add your food, what you are eating, what you are cooking, what you are enjoying. This is a baked, baked camembert on a board. And over here, I've added a recipe or the ingredients of a recipe of one of my new favorite things, a winter spinach salad. While I'm here, I want to point out that uh, these drawings are not sophisticated. Do not wait until you know how to draw to start drawing. I am very much aware of the fact that this looks like a wonky yellow pillow. It's not. It's a cheese, people. It's a cheese because I say it is. See, look, it says camembert right there and there. And that's how you know. Over here, this is some spinach leaves. These, these dots, those are cranberries. So go ahead, take a chance, make some fun, Messy, not great drawings. They're good enough. Add what you're wearing. It might be party clothes. It might be anti-party clothes. Maybe your sparkles. Maybe your sweatpants. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, my husband and I recently had a date. We went to see a concert in Cardiff, the big city. And I did get a little dressed up. So when I got home, I drew some little imperfect drawings of what those were and then wrote little stories about the pieces. I do love clothes. Ah, back to food. One of the things that I do like about Christmas are mince pies. And if I want a mince pie, I have to go from here to here to buy them. So my point is, think about adding a map to your illustrated journal. Especially good if you're visiting someplace you haven't been before with family or, or some, some friends, but also good just for every day. 
here's the route that I take when I go to my favorite supermarket. So just make a few lines and a few little boxes and hey presto, you have a map. And if you are taking a walk, a stroll, think about adding what you found on your walk. You do not have to be a botanist to know that ginkgo leaves are not out in mid-December. That's because I actually picked these a month ago and haven't had time to put them in my, my book. So when I was looking for things to draw to make my holiday pages, I went ahead and added them because they're my pages. I can add whatever I want, even if it's from a few weeks ago. Uh, let's see. I'll talk about that in a mo. You can add your decorations. It might be a tree. It might be uh, lights or something that's particular to your tradition. I'm not putting up a tree, but when my son was young, I did put up trees and the memories of us doing that together are really, really uh, meaningful to me. So add your decorations. But another good addition to your pages is going to be drawing about or writing about a Christmas memory or a holiday memory. Christmas past. So just make some notes and it uh, doesn't have to be fancy and it will carry a lot of um, emotional pack. I promise you. Add a to-do list. Don't tell me you don't have one right now because I'm pretty sure you've got about 70. I just took a couple out of my notebook, glued them down, and then, you know, if they look sort of boring, add a border or some doodles or a frame and make it pop a little. This is a page I haven't made yet, but I'm going to tonight. It's going to be what I'm reading. I'm just going to draw some books. You could do something similar, make little thumbnails, ideas of, uh, if you're watching anything special uh, and festive right now, especially with your family, what you're reading, what you're watching. My first tip for getting pages made when you are crazy busy is use what you have now. Do not wait until you have a sketchbook and an art kit. If what you have is a school notebook and a pencil, you can start making pages. Borrow a crayon, uh, improvise. Use what you got and start making your pages. My second tip is probably the most useful one, and that is work where you are. That is to say, around people. Do not wait until you are in your workspace or tables to start making your pages during the holidays because they may not get made. Instead, go ahead and take out your book when you are having hot chocolate, when you are watching a friend make a, a meal, when you're sitting in front of It's a Wonderful Life or Elf or whatever you're sitting in front of, pull out your book and start working. Don't be shy. Once people know what you're doing and if you explain it to them and show them, they will, uh, they will not mind. In fact, they will get it. I have seen time after time where at first people were not quite sure what to make of the book and the art kit coming out at the table. But after I just explained and did it for a, a, a couple of days, those same people were the ones saying, hey, where's your book? Where's your art kit? Aren't you going to draw today? Aren't you going to draw us? This has happened over and over. So don't be shy. Get out your book, your pencil and your crayon, and start making pages. People will understand. Another way to break the ice with drawing in front of, in public, in front of your family or friends, is to ask them to draw in your book. Ask them to doodle or draw or write something. And um, this is especially fun if you have kids. 
but you can ask because they are fearless. Uh, I showed this a while back. It is not Christmas. It was when I was on vacation, but I was talking to some kids, 10 years old and seven years old, about making pages. And they took their school notebooks and their ballpoint pens, and then they drew these lovely little pieces that I then added to my book. So don't be afraid to ask people to work in your book. And uh, I can tell you right now that if kids start, grown-ups will follow. It's a great way to get pages made, and it is really fun. We are back at the cheese tray to point out that a good way to get your pages made is to pick out the simplest thing in your tableau. You probably can't do a whole spread or everything under the tree. Don't try to. Just pick out one or two things that are not intimidating. Draw one tangerine. It's an orange ball. I know you can draw a tangerine or a potato or a spinach leaf. So look around you, pick out something super simple that you can get down, and then later you can write your notes around it and flesh it out. Uh, speaking of, okay, you could see when I was showing this earlier that this page isn't finished. I haven't had time. So what I did was I penciled in some notes here. I just, you know, stream whatever was going on. And then I made little bullet points. That means that later when I do have some time, I can go in and write my text and tell the story, make more of the bullet points there. So be sure and take little notes if you don't have time to finish a page where you are. Finally, think about adding found papers. It's a good way to uh, use up space, add interest to the eye, and if you're not confident with drawing, to kind of get you started. This is from the box that this came in, and it was pretty. Uh, here is Here are some free brochures and catalogs that I got in the supermarket, and I'm going to go through those through these later and see if there's any fun text or things that I can glue into my pages. There's one, here's some mulling spices. That's a label from a bottle. Uh, let's see, this is from one of those free brochures and this is from the um, program of the concert I went to. So I just made a page out of that. Easy, easy. Found papers. And what you can do with found papers also is make a pocket. I love pockets in my journals. This pocket is made from an old envelope that was actually a tax bill. And then to make it look a little festive, it's a tax bill. I again took a box from some mince pies and cut out the festive parts and just glued it here to make a little anchor the page and make it look pretty and fun. Inside, I have put some Christmas cards. Okay, somebody did not send me these. I'm going to be honest. These are some French vintage Christmas cards. Now, I don't want to glue these down because they've got some cool writing on the back. And if you have a pocket, then you don't have to glue things like this down. You can collect them there, and then they won't be in that drawer where you're, you'll never see them again. They'll actually be part of your experience. If you like these cards, I actually have a lot of 25 of them, printable versions on Etsy. And there's a link to that below this video. So if you'd like some vintage French uh, postcards that you can print up and use in your own work, you can find those there. There you go. If you would like more information about how to make an illustrated journal, a visual diary, I have an online class. 
And you can find out more about that or find the link to that class in the text below this video. If you have any questions about making pages, let me know. I'll get back to you. And if you have any suggestions and techniques of your own, please leave those in the comments and we will all be the richer for it. I hope this gets you up and going. Until later, get up and go make pages. Bye.